last time. For those of you that are new or you are catching up, the very first episode we made a lot of trades, we stacked up our PlayStation budget and we were able to walk away with a PS1 console that's like an ugly maroon color and a couple games so it wasn't bad but in the second episode we went to a game store, did a lot more hunting, we stacked up a huge budget, it was just enough to get us a little bit more off of the list as you guys are seeing here we definitely had an upgrade from episode one we didn't have much in the budget we're left with about 53 dollars and that will bring us into today before we go out and stack up more in our PlayStation funds or let alone go out and buy more games, I wanted to show off a quick trade that I made because it is one of the games that we need on the list and it brings me to another point in this series that I want to bring up saying, utilize your connections when it comes to building a collection, whether it's friends, family, Facebook, Craigslist, anything that you can do within a small, quick inner circle to acquire or achieve some of the things that are on your goal, connections are one of the best ways to make it happen. You will see a video up on the channel prior where I did a game deal with one of my buddies and I ended up making more than enough profit on that lot, but moral of the story in having these connections that was from a friend. I was able to save a Pokemon Diamond and a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Game Boy cart with the manual. I was hanging on to them for a little while. The Instagram viewer uh, reached out and said he was looking for those for his collection and he actually had, and this is the first time I'm seeing it right here, he actually had Dino Crisis that he was willing to trade. So. Pokemon Diamond for me, I come across that quite often. I'm not a big uh, TMNT fan. Sorry if there's any fans out there, don't mean to offend you. Moral of the story, I was more than 100% to do that trade. So moving forward, before we go out and buy more games on the list and try to restock our funds because our funds are really low, we can finally add Dino Crisis crossed off the list. And a quick, no, this is, the disc looks great by the way. This is the first time too I have ever owned this game like I have never came across it out in the wild so this is pretty fun I love that it's black label granted that that's what we're going for so once we get home I get to add this on the shelf but let's go out see if we can find some more games or let alone build up that PlayStation budget now yes we will be buying more games off of the list but we have to swing by Goodwill to see if we can stack up our funds a little bit one of the sections that I like to always swing by is the plush or plushies. You can find good ones, like here we have a Charmander for a buck 99. Honestly, it's very tempting to keep it myself, but it's gonna have to go into the PlayStation collection funds if we can actually get it to sell. And then I like to mosey over basically into the t-shirts. Now, Goodwill, it's definitely a hit or miss, but I stumbled upon a Metallica tee for $2.99. I think I can turn it around for $10 in shipping. It's not gonna be a home run, but it's definitely something that we can add. I swung over to the CD section and noticed that there was Taylor Swift Red. She's a very popular artist. I think it's worth the pickup. I also snagged a Son of Anarchy t-shirt. So this is the little bundle from Goodwill that we will be going to eBay. And then when I got home just a few blocks down the road from me, there was a garage sale. So you know I had to walk down and swing by. There wasn't much there to work with, but something I noticed on the table was two Monte Carlo, Monaco or Monica, however you pronounce that, hats. I'm not into racing, I'm not into ball caps, but I know people sell them and they can fetch some money, so I think we're gonna try it. As you guys can see, we're walking away from the sale with uh, two hats. Now, normally I'm not a hat reseller, but the point of this challenge is if we can turn anything into cash for the PlayStation 1 fund, that's mainly what we're after. And then we got the Forky Squishmallow. This would be a good one to resell. It was only a buck, so we paid three dollars um but my girlfriend's basically obsessed with these bad boys so it's gonna have to go home and go to the collection so we're basically doing the two hats at a dollar a piece and hopefully we can uh, turn around i saw some of these for like 15 bucks a pop i'm gonna see if we can maybe even just do a bundle and do like two of them for 20 you know bundle them together and just get rid of them i don't know anything about them but like I said, if we can turn it into the PlayStation cash, that's all that matters. So before we do any listing to eBay, I wanted to hit up another half price books. As you guys saw in the last episode, it was 
pretty unsuccessful. So today, Katrina and I decided to try out a different location. And let me tell you, there was still not a lot going on for PlayStation 1 games, except for I was able to get pretty lucky, I say. I stumbled upon Grand Theft Auto, the director's cut for $15. I did some looking on eBay and price charting, and it goes for about 30 bucks. Now, it's not on the list, but I can use it to fill in the pick me spot. I'll just clean off all the goo, and I think it's worth the pickup. And then moving forward, I just wanted to show you, because there's something about old VHS tapes. I'm not a huge collector of them, but there's certain ones that their artwork, like this Mars attack, that just absolutely sticks to me. And I wanna gather up a pile of them for like decoration when I can finally set up a game room. And I don't know, there's just something about it. Like in the man from Planet X, it's just things like this. I find it sleazy, cheesy, whatever you wanna call it. It just really appeals to me. For $7.50 too, they have the Star Wars droids. I believe it's like a Do 1996. Nick's cafe. According to the agency, this is it, R2. So we just got out of half price books. Um, I think I spent, yeah, it was actually $15 on the dot. So we're gonna be removing that out of the PlayStation funds. On Grand Theft Auto Director's Cut, it goes for about $30, so $15 was basically a no-brainer. I'm going to use it to fill in one of the pick-me spots, so when we get home, we'll cross that off the list. I got to clean it up, though. Stickers everywhere, so I'm going to remove that. I can't do the math right now, so you'll see it on the screen where we're at, so let's go and see if we can find some more games. The two movies you guys saw when I was over at the VHS section, I couldn't help it. So this is nothing to do with the PlayStation Challenge and I'm not reducing this out of the budget. This was basically like on my own cost. I ended up getting a copy of Mars Attack and Star Wars Droids just because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Eventually what I'd like to do for the channel is build an actual like full on setup in a game room where Smalls and I live right now. We just don't have enough space to be doing that. So basically once I'm able to build the room i'm gonna add these to it i really want to deck it out and make some awesome decorations so we're gonna go to the next spot now in the last spot that we went to was level up we were actually on the way to a game stop but punched in the wrong game store and this was the first time ever at this place and let me tell you there was not a lot for video games but the items they had as you guys are seeing here on screen in my opinion was definitely quality they went with quality over quantity a lot of rare or more uncommon items that you just normally don't see when you're out at game stores at least for me maybe your local area is different but here in minnesota sometimes it just tends to be a little bit more dry now moving forward they had a smaller selection of playstation 1 games i was getting a little dis discouraged that i wasn't going to be able to find anything and then i stumbled upon Point Blank 3, which is actually on our list, and the most depressing part about this is I just did not have the budget to buy it. And the other thing that was depressing is they had Spyro, which we need for the challenge, but once again, it's greatest hits, and I am only collecting black label so that was a little bit of a bummer but still not bad i ended up actually picking up a copy of one game i've never seen before you'll see it upcoming here smalls and i were just looking at some of the pokemon stuff but it was called rogue trip here for 20 bucks it reminded me of like twisted metal and i've just never seen it in my hunting career and i figured since we're at about 30 some dollars left in the budget it was probably worth the pickup we just stopped in level up uh we were actually going to gamestop but somebody uh punched in the wrong game store which was actually a blessing though i'm just a uh, blessing in disguise yeah i'm giving you a little crap because we've never been there before so the budget at this point, I think, is completely drained. And I got the receipt. It was $19.99. I think it came up to like $21 with tax. And we picked up Rogue Trip. To me, it kind of reminds me of uh, Twisted Metal. And I've never actually seen this game before. So out of the 25 years that I've been alive, I've never seen this bad boy. Even the guy at the counter said it was kind of an odd title. So I figured it was worth the pickup. I saved the receipt because once again, with the PlayStation budget, I gotta do some serious math when I get home because I think we have like 
drained it to the max. And then now you we're said gonna, after we left half price books, it was like thirty something dollars. My guess was between twenty five to thirty bucks, and I just spent twenty one dollars on this, so we're probably in the like <laughs> four dollars. Yeah. So in other words, we're not going to be able to afford anything. until we go and stack up the funds. But nonetheless, when we get home, I'll give you the update for the amount and then we can cross off two more on the list and we get across off the Dino Crisis that I made the trade for in the beginning of the video. So pretty cool, three games today. So I don't know if we're gonna get any more because it's all gonna be codependent on the funds. So we'll see what happens. Back home, this is my absolute favorite part. Today we only got three games. I know it's moving a little bit slow, but like I said, we really gotta sell items to show you guys the actual profit to afford everything on the list. So let's move forward into my favorite part. And we're gonna be covering up two of the pick me spots because that rogue trip and the GTA technically go in here, which means moving forward, we only have two spots left. And then up here on the horror and grails, we can finally get rid of Dino Crisis. So that comes to what? Two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. I think we finally acquired 10 games. We have a long way to go. Stay tuned, you guys. These three will be added to the shelf and all of the items that you guys saw earlier, like the Charmander plush, the hats, all the things that are gonna be listed, I will be dealing with those in the next episode. I'll be getting them up on eBay today. And once the items sell and we generate some more profit, I will let you guys know so you can see all the sold comps. But until then, we have a ton of work to do. So let me go add these to the shelf and then I will catch all of you guys in the next episode, stay tuned.